Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Bruno Ferenc and I'm working at TMS Software. And uh, it's my pleasure to be invited here on CodeRage to tell you something on the challenges of creating cross-framework Delphi UI controls. First of all, the question is, um, why would we want to go through this exercise to create cross-framework UI controls? Well, first of all, um, if we create an UI control that we can use from VCL and from FMX, um, we can, of course, avoid the learning curve um, if we have, uh, in the case, we would have a different control for VCL and FMX. We can not only exchange our business logic between an application created for VCL and one for FireMonkey, but um, if we deal with exactly the same um, visual UI controls on both frameworks, we can also exchange and reuse a lot of UI related code. If we build complex controls once and use them on both VCL and FMX, of course, um, we can focus our attention on one um, code base and uh, with this approach, um, create and end up with an, uh, one solid and reali reliable code base. To a certain degree, um, cross-framework UI controls are already um, available in FireMonkey and VCL. If we look at the um, standard controls like a T-Edit, T-Listbox, T-Button, T-Label, these are more or less similar between VCL and FireMonkey. So in that respect, we can uh, reuse a lot of code. We can avoid a learning curve, but unfortunately, there are still um, small differences that um, can break code between the VCL and the FMX versions of these uh, basic controls. If we talk about UI controls, it's first of all important to define what we understand as an UI control that we will be able to use from the VCL framework and from the FireMonkey framework. As a UI control, we understand a control that receives input from the operating system, keyboard input, mouse touch, um, drag and drop input from the operating system. In response to uh, these control inputs, the control will present itself through painting. So this is more or less the classic VCL approach to um, render controls into the form. And of course, in addition to uh, inputs that the control can receive from keyboard, mouse, and so forth, uh, the presentation and the behavior of the control uh, will also depend on data data that is uh, or can be um, bound from um, a database a data set via data binding. We expect that um, this control, these UI controls that we will be able to invoke from uh, VCL framework Delphi and C++ builder applications uh, as well as FireMonkey applications also uh, for Delphi and for C++ Builder. So, uh, if we uh, have the intention to create a user interface control that can be used from both um, FMX and VCL in Delphi and in C++ Builder, all installed at the same time uh, in the IDE and usable in the IDE, uh, we will face, of course, a lot of challenges to uh, get to achieve this uh, goal. First of all, um, it's important to note that if we set up this kind of user interface control, uh, we will um, build upon the control framework that's available both for VCL and FireMonkey. That means that for VCL, we will typically want to descend our control from the T custom control class that is defined in the VCL.controls unit. For the FireMonkey framework, if we want our control to live nicely 
uh, as a first-class citizen within a uh, fire monkey form, we will have to descend from the T control class that is defined in the fmx.controls unit. Issue with uh, this uh, approach and the challenge is that if we create a class with exactly the same name, um, but uh, one of these classes uh, relies, depends on the VCL framework and an other uh, control with exactly the same name relies on the FireMonkey framework. Um, this will cause a problem to install it into the IDE um, because we cannot um, have this class defined in uh, one unit and have it depend both on VCL and the FMX framework. So this uh, challenge will force us to uh, implement a trick, a trick that we will uh, explain later on in the session, uh, to have our um, control with the same class name for VCL and for FMX uh, installed in both uh, FireMonkey and VCL framework. Our control um, will use the existing uh, framework um, because, as in, you could see in the previous slide, we will uh, de descend from uh, T control from the VCL framework for creating our VCL uh, version of our UI control, and we will descend from the FMX T control uh, to create the FMX version. We uh, prefer uh, this approach, of course, uh, because we want to benefit from uh, everything that's already available in the framework being an abstraction for um, everything that goes on in the operating system. And uh, by doing this, uh, we will uh, try to reuse as much as possible code from uh, the framework itself and from the RTL. And by doing this, uh, we also benefit from the abstraction that the uh, FireMonkey framework already uh, gives us for uh, supporting now for uh, operating systems and we expect soon uh, also um, five operating systems so uh, Windows, iOS, Android, macOS and who knows uh, very shortly also uh, Linux. If we have a look at these two uh, frameworks VCL and FMX um, it's important to note uh, very important uh, differences that will affect our design. The VCL, as we all know, has an integer-based coordinate system, while the FireMonkey framework has a floating-point-based coordinate system, and the FireMonkey framework can also do out-of-the-box scaling and rotation of controls, which is not possible in the VCL framework. Of course, uh, these major differences will affect how we implement the painting and, for example, mouse handling in our control if we want that our control is usable from both VCL and FireMonkey framework. Other than this, um, the base classes that we uh, typically use throughout user interface controls have also important differences between VCL and FireMonkey. One example to highlight this is uh, the T font class uh, that has a color property in the VCL framework and that does not have a color property in the FireMonkey framework, but instead relies on a T fill to draw a text with a specific color. If we look at the implementation of um, catching the operating system, um, inputs coming from keyboard and mouse. Also here, there are major differences between the implementation of the T-Control at VCL level and the T-Control at FMX level. I highlighted here some important differences. Uh, you can see, of course, that in uh, VCL, coordinates in mouse handling are integer-based. In FMX, these are floating point-based. But as you can see, also in key, event handlers there are important differences and note also the um, fact that in fmx there is no key press um, event available 
uh, while this is the case in the VCL framework. It gets worse when, of course, we use more uh, complex uh, event handlers. Uh, I have one example here, uh, which is the dialog key um, virtual method in T control at FireMonkey level, uh, which is in fact uh, more or less uh, the same as the WM get dialog code uh, Windows message handler in the VCL framework. Also drag and drop, for example. Uh, here you can see there are major differences between the virtual methods at the control level in VCL and in FireMonkey. This was uh, what, uh, what is concerning uh, retrieving or getting inputs from the operating system. Our control will have to render itself on the form, and there we typically rely on a T canvas. Both VCL and FMX define a T canvas, but of course, both are very different um, classes, objects. The T canvas in VCL is defined in the VCL.graphics unit and uh, descends from T custom canvas. The canvas in FireMonkey is a completely different beast and is defined in fmx.graphics. Many differences exist in uh, canvas handling between VCL and FMX. Uh, I've um, noted here some of uh, the most important differences. Um, VCL is based on a 24-bit color space, while FMX is from the ground up built with a 32-bit color space, so every color also has an opacity defined. VCL, uh, there the canvas is a wrapper around the GDI API in the Windows operating system. Of course, in FireMonkey, this is a lot more uh, difficult because here the T canvas has to be a wrapper for multiple graphics uh, underlying uh, layers uh, because it needs to run on different operating systems with different graphic layers. And as such, uh, typical objects such as a T brush and the T pen that wrap on the GDI uh, pen and brush do not exist in FireMonkey. And here we have implementations like a T fill, T stroke, etc. Other than this, more major differences. Um, basic things like a T color in the VCL that's uh, defined as a type um, consisting of. Uh, names as CL red, CL yellow, etc. In uh, FMX, this uh, translates to CLA red, CLA yellow. Key definitions are also uh, different. Basic things like uh, alignment. In VCL, we are used to uh, T alignment with uh, left justify, center right justify. In FMX, this translates to center leading and trailing. As in a user interface control, we typically quickly use images for rendering these user interface controls. I also want to note the differences between handling images in VCL and handling images in FireMonkey. In VCL, we have different classes for handling different types of images. It starts with the T bitmap, which is a wrapper around the Windows bitmap format. And to handle different uh, formats, just as just as um, PNG, JPEG, GIF, uh, we have specific classes to handle these specific image formats. In FireMonkey, we have just one class, the T bitmap class, and this supports out of the box different image formats, being uh, bitmap, GIF, JPEG, and PNG. So, with all these uh, differences between the VCL framework and the FireMonkey framework, uh, we would typically be inclined to say that it's a useless exercise to try to build up a code base for a UI control that will work both in the VCL and in the FireMonkey framework. But as you will know us from a TMS software, we are not so fast to give up. So we did a lot of effort and came up with an abstraction layer, an abstraction layer that we call the FNC, stands for Framework Neutral Components. And so with this abstraction layer, we can um, write code bases for UI controls 
that will uh, allow us to have them work in VCL and FMX. In this abstraction layer, uh, we um, define a number of base classes uh, from where we can um, descend our uh, classes to create um, nice complex user interface controls. Um, so we introduce TMS FNC custom control, which is the base class to descend our UI controls from. And we have some uh, variation with the T TMS FNC custom scroll control for um, controls that have a scrolling region. T canvas um, is abstracted via the TMS FNC graphics class uh, that you should or can consider as a T canvas that is um, underlying the same for VCL and for FireMonkey. And within this canvas, of course, we need a lot of uh, other different classes to do basic drawing operations with some font fill, uh, to draw lines with the stroke, etc. So also here we define common types, common types that are used um, between VCL and FMX. If we have a look at the TMS FNC custom control class, here we define the typical uh, virtual methods for handling keyboard and mouse input, drag and drop, um, also painting. Uh, and these virtual methods are written in a way that uh, these overrides uh, can be, are completely abstract from um, the underlying framework VCL or FMX. So if we code our UI control against this abstract um, interface for keyboard, mouse, drag and drop, paint, we can write one code base that can be used for both VCL and FMX. So uh, with this um, information, uh, we are um, ready to set out for um, creating a sample FNC-based UI control, a UI control that will work both in VCL and FMX. And for this example, we will build a control that does some custom painting that handles keyboard input, mouse input. And uh, to show you um, how to deal with images, uh, both for VCL and FMX, we will also have this control use PNG images. So uh, we are ready to get started and um, create our first UI control, FNC UI control, and uh, we will be able to use it in VCL and FMX. So here we have the Berlin IDE, and in this Berlin IDE, I will create from the ground up an FNC control and FNC UI control uh, that will be able that we will be able to use both in VCL and FMX. This UI control will be a track bar, a kind of fancy track bar, a track bar that will be built up of a slider background image. This is the background image we will be using for the slider. And on this uh, slider background, we will have a thumb. This is the image that represents the thumb of our track bar. So let's get started. We will create the control first from a um, VCL application, and then we will transform that control and so that it can also be used from a FireMonkey application. We create a new uh, VCL application. Let's first save this um, application in the right place, here in our code rage folder, and let's also ensure that the executable is generated in this uh, folder because we will use from the same folder the slider background image and the thumb image. Let's add a unit, a unit that will host our custom UI control. And let's immediately give this the proper name, the proper name being VCL TMS FNC Fancy Trackbar.pass. Let's add the units that we will need. And I've prepared uh, some code snippets to accelerate 
creating uh, this demo. So here we have RTL units, classes, and types, and we have three FNC specific abstraction layer units. One that holds the TMS FNC custom control class from which we will descend. One that hosts the TMS FNC graphics class that we will use to draw or control and one a unit with some common types, the TMS FNC types unit. And now everything is in place to start uh, defining our control. We will call this control TMS FNC fancy trend bar, and this control will be sent from TMS FNC custom control. First thing that we will do is add the interface of our control interface that consists of the published properties and to represent this trackbar control we have a few properties to add which are following so we have a font uh, property the font will be used to draw the position value of the trackbar on our trackbar control we have a minimum and maximum between which um, our track bar or our dump will move. We have a TMS FNC bitmap class that holds the image for the slider background. And note that this TMS FNC bitmap class here used in VCL has built in support for um, JPEG, GIF, bitmap, but also PNG images. And in the same way also, of course, in the FireMonkey framework. Similar uh, FNC bitmap for the thumb. Then we add a tick stroke um, object class property, and this holds the um, attributes of the stroke that will be used to draw tick marks on our um, trackbar control. Number of ticks that will be drawn on this uh, control. And finally, of course, we need a position property. This property will determine the position of the thumb on our trackbar. So let's auto complete this, all these published properties, and we need to adapt for class properties that, of course, need to use the assign method instead of uh, just using equal. Uh, here we will add some codes to ensure that the position is within our minimum and maximum range and what we will also do is invoke a repaint when the position is changed and we do that by calling invalidate as we are used to in the VCL framework for our dump we also need to introduce the assign method and the same is for the stroke object like this now our property setters are okay and now we need to add our constructor and destructor that will initialize these properties that's it like this auto complete it and let's fill in the constructor and in this constructor we create the thumb tms fnc bitmap class we create the slider for the same thing uh, a text stroke object a font object and we have this little private variable that will be used later on in the control to handle the movement of the track bar and this is of the type boolean and in our destructor we of course need to clean up all objects created in the constructor so let's add this immediately so now the basics of our class are already uh, defined and so we can now test out if this code is all right, comp compiles, it can be used. So we add the TMS FNC, fancy trackbar unit 
to our um, users list of the application. And I have some prepared some initializing code here that we will use in the constructor of our form. We need to define the instance, of course, of the type TMS FNC trackbar. And we need to add one more unit to our users list to be able to use the get app path TMS FNC utils unit where the get app path method is defined. This get app path method is a method that gets the application path and this uh, adds it for uh, all possible operating systems supported uh, as this um, application folder can differ from operating system to operating system. Having this defined, let's uh, test out what uh, this already does. And here we can see the background of our custom UI control in VCL. Uh, and of course, we do not see anything more for the moment because we haven't defined any drawing yet in our custom UI control. So that's the first thing to do now. We will add the override of the draw method in the protected section of our class. This draw method will perform all the painting of uh, the control like this. And let's add the code, the draw code like this. And here some explaining is needed in this draw override. First thing we do is draw the background of the control with its color. And then we will draw the slider image vertically centered in the control. So we get the height of this slider. We calculate the middle based on the height of the control and the height of the slider. And we draw the um, slider background image. Next thing to do is uh, draw the tick marks. We will draw tick marks on the top of the slider, both on the um, upper side of the slider and the bottom side. And the tick marks will have a height of 10 pixels. And here we see that for the number of tick marks to draw, we um, use the stroke that was defined for the tick marks. Note here that um, the line is drawn from point one to point two, and uh, these are of the type floating point point. So even though we are here in um, the VCL framework, we use floating point numbers because we will want to reuse exact, uh, the exact same code also for the FireMonkey framework. Here, next section in the code is drawing in the middle of the control the value of the position of the thumb. And I need to add one more unit to um, where int is defined in the scissors uh, unit. Now that is uh, resolved here. And Final thing to do is draw the thumb at the thumb position, also vertically centered in the control. So here is the calculation of the vertical center, and here is the calculation of the X position of the thumb on our uh, track bar control. And finally, we draw this thumb on uh, the control. Having this defined, we should already see something when executing this code and as you can see it has loaded the slider background image and it has uh, also drawn the thumb on top of this uh, slider next thing to do is add keyboard and mouse handling so that um, our thumb will move in response to uh, mouse and keyboard and for that i have overrides, I need overrides of these virtual mouse and keyboard uh, methods. So here we have the usual mouse down, mouse move and mouse up. And we have the handler for the key down. 
let's uh, autocomplete these uh, methods and fill in the implementation. So in the key down, we add uh, this code here. And so what we do is if the left arrow key is pressed, we decrease the position. If the right arrow key is pressed, we increase the position of the thumb. Note here that I'm using for the arrow key left and right, the key underscore left and key underscore right uh, types. These are abstract arrow uh, key types that can be used both in VCL and in the FireMonkey framework. So that's what it is for keyboard handling. Now let's add the code for mouse handling. And everything starts in the mouse down where we will have to detect if uh, the mouse is within the thumb. If it's within the thumb, the thumb will be moved with mouse moves. So first thing we do is give focus to the control when the mouse is clicked on the control. And then we detect if um, the Y position of the mouse is within the height of the thumb. We calculate um, the position of the, ver the horizontal position of the thumb. We check if the X coordinate of the mouse is within the thumb area or not. If it's within the thumb area, we set this uh, little private variable and we um, call capture X, which is um, invoking capturing mouse input for our control. Having that done, it's um, the next step is implementing the mouse move handler. And here we change the position of the thumb in relationship to the X coordinate of our mouse, when of course um, we had clicked first within the thumb area. And the final step is ending this process when we get a mouse up. And what we do is simple. If we were in uh, dealing with uh, handling, with moving the thumb, we release the mouse capture and we set our private variable that we were uh, moving the thumb to false. And with this code, uh, we should have a moving track bar. Let's uh, test it out. And as you can see now, I can draw, or I can, can move with uh, the mouse my thumb. And now I'm using the left and right arrow key to also move this thumb position. And with this, I have a first basic implementation of a fancy track bar working in VCL. And now it's a matter of um, moving that code to FireMonkey. And what I do for this, I have this uh, little PowerShell script. And this uh, PowerShell script will basically um, replace all references to the VCL framework, to the FMX framework, and create an FMX uh, version of this uh, control in, in this pass file. So let's uh, execute this PowerShell script like this. And now we can see that it generated for us this FireMonkey version of exactly the same code. To test it out, we will add a new FireMonkey project like this. Let's also immediately save it in the right place here. And let's uh, use the FMX prefix, so we know that this is about the FMX version. This is our FMX project. And now, of course, we need to add the units of our track bar for FMX, like this. And what we are going to do now is reuse the exact same code from the VCL framework in our FireMonkey application and also add this define for instance to the form and like this 
and we are ready to test out our first cross framework UI control in this FireMonkey application. There's one more error, one more unit reference that I have to add to my users list, the FMX TMS FNC Utils unit. And now everything should be in place to have. Uh, of course, I need to add the default output path to ensure that my application can find the images for my slider and my thumb. This is our FireMonkey application. And as you can see, it has exactly the same appearance, look and feel, and exactly the same behavior. I can move the thumb with arrow keys. And I can target, of course, as this is a FireMonkey application, I can target this to iOS, to Android, or to Mac OS uh, everywhere. It will behave the same. On a touch screen from your mobile device, it will uh, properly handle this and move uh, the track, the thumb along with uh, moving uh, your finger on the touch screen of your uh, mobile device. And that completes the implementation of a um, first basic uh, user interface control with uh, one code base, a code base that is used both in VCL and in FireMonkey applications. Now, of course, everything we did, you can experiment and play with it yourself. Uh, you can download the library, the base classes of our FNC controls from the first URL. And in the second URL download, there is the full source code of the sample control that we created in this session, plus an article describing the whole process in case um, you uh, want more detail this is all covered in the article and now to uh, close this session i wanted to have a brief look at uh, a set of controls that we created that built on top of this um, fnc abstraction layer and uh, give you this way controls that you can use both in vcl and fmx we'll in Briefly have a look here at a grid control, a planner or scheduler control, a rich editor, a tree view, and a responsive list. First, here is our FNC grid with a brief overview of um, the most important features this grid has. And I'm going to go over it um, in detail, but you can see uh, the list of features here and have a look at the screenshot here but i rather um, have a brief look with you in the ide at a demo of this uh, grid control so let's um, open up this demo and first of all i'm going to open it up in a fire monkey application so this is our fnc grid control and this grid control has an event handler implemented on get cell editor type and if we have a look at the code you can see here that um, for column one, we instruct the grid to use a combo box as in place editor for column three, a track bar for column four, a date picker and so on. So if we run this demo and have a look at how it behaves, we can see here that it indeed uses a combo box for column one and a date picker for column four. This was the FireMonkey uh, demo. So if we open up the exact same demo, but in the VCL framework, this is the VCL application. We can see here the OnGetCell editor type event, which has exactly the same code as uh, in the FireMonkey application, of course. And the result will be exactly the same behavior in our uh, fire in our VCL application as we had in our FireMonkey application. And this brings us to the second control, a planner or scheduling calendar control, where you can have multiple types of time access. 
where you can have single or multi resource handling and um, you can add events, edit events and so forth. This is a screenshot showing the planner control in action. And now I want to move back to the IDE to show you a demo of this planner. And I will show you the demo in a VCL in an FireMonkey application. So here we have this planner control. And when it starts up, it shows the calendar in a single resource mode with a time axis that is a 24 hour day time axis. I can move to a week overview, add multiple resources. I can change the time axis to an hour or 30 minutes. And I can also change the um, time axis from vertical to horizontal. And by uh, clicking the item, I can drag, drop. When I double click, I can uh, edit the item and change um, information in the event and so forth. So this was our second complex big control, the planner control. Third one we have is a rich editor control that you can use in both VCL and FMX. It's a uh, light white uh, WYSIWYG editor um, and it can import, export in RTF, HTML and so forth. So having a look now at um, the rich editor demo and let's start a new FireMonkey application for this. And first of all, we are going to drop a toolbar. This is the rich editor format toolbar, a pre-built toolbar to work with the rich editor control. Now I drop uh, the rich editor itself on the form like this. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And what I need to do is hook up the rich editor to the toolbar so the toolbar can interact with the rich editor. When I run this application, We can see our rich editor. I can start typing in this rich editor. Something like this. And I can select and I can change the attributes of the selected font. I can make it a little bit bigger, change the font to whatever like this and as you can see we have a rich editor like component here used in the um, FireMonkey framework and I can do exactly the same in the VCL framework. Control number four is a tree view control. This is a tree view control designed to uh, support multiple columns, to have a normal mode and a virtual mode. And tree view was designed from the ground up to be able to handle millions of nodes. Here you see a screenshot demonstrating some of the features of this tree view. You see the multiple columns, you see formatting of columns, you see the use of HTML formatted text in nodes, you see the use of uh, checkboxes. And of course, we can show all this also in a uh, demo. And let's um, use the VCL for once. But as explained, we have exactly the same thing for FireMonkey. This is the VCL tree view demo. And you can see the format of text. Uh, we can programmatically expand collapse in the tree view and so on. And then finally, 
I wanted to show you the responsive list control. Responsive list control is a control that um, where the display of items can be changed um, corresponding to the size, the width or the height of the control. So um, when the width is uh, small, limited, this control can display its information in a single column. When um, the width of the control is uh, higher, it can, for example, display um, the information in multiple columns. And it will become more clear if I open up and run this uh, demo. Let's uh, change back to um, FMX and run this responsive list demo in the FMX framework. And here we have this list control. As you can see, it is set up with um, data from cars. Now this list, responsive list control, is programmed to have more columns as the width of the uh, responsive list increases. And so you can see here that um, I have conditions that change as I size the control to have multiple columns um, depending on the width. And the setup of these conditions is done with this uh, design time editor where you can see uh, for the various widths that the number of columns here, three in this case, two in the, in the case, the width is between 250 and 500 and so forth. So you can fully dynamically and yourself configure this responsive list control, how it displays itself, how many columns or rows it has, depending on the size on the screen of this uh, control. And so this ends up this uh, brief um, demonstration of various um, complex FNC UI controls available both for VCL and FMX. There are many more controls in our um, TMS FNC UI pack. And so I invite you to discover these. And that leaves some more time for questions and answers now. Are you there, Bruno? Yes, hello. Fantastic, I hear you. Uh, there's a few questions here. Let me go ahead and pop this out. If anybody does have any additional questions for Bruno about the uh, their new framework here, what is it, FNC, is that correct? Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, does FNC support VCL styles? Yes. Uh, in the latest version, actually, version 1.6, uh, we have support for VCL styles. That means that we uh, pick up the crucial cores from the VCL style and uh, use this to uh, adapt the look and feel of uh, the FNC uh, controls. And this is this actually applies both to uh, VCL and FMX styles. Okay, great. The, the um, Jim's asking what was the uh, percent H dot, uh, dash for in your code there? I'm not sure if you recall that. Okay. Uh, this has actually uh, nothing uh, to do with uh, Delphi. This has to do with support for the FPC compiler. And uh, this suppresses warnings in the FPC compiler when there is an, a parameter in a method, a parameter that is not directly used by the code in the method. Okay. For Delphi, uh, this uh, has no uh, functionality. Okay. Lots of comments from people saying that they're really excited about this, that they're excited, this is a neat technology. Uh, the question here also, if there are any plans to convert your TMS Diagram Studio to FireMonkey. Actually, as we speak, uh, we are looking to build our Diagram Studio product on top of this FNC technology to make it available for um, VCL, FMX, and then have a united version this way for uh, the multiple frameworks uh, that we support. Okay, since the planner is built on top of FNC, does that mean it'll work for Android? Yes, that's correct. That's great. Under the FNC controls, 
they just support every uh, target operating system that the FireMonkey framework supports. Okay. And in addition, actually, in addition to uh, the desktop use of uh, such controls, we have um, built-in detection that the, for example, the planner runs on a mobile device uh, because uh, in that case the grips to uh, be able to drag and drop or resize an event in the planner become way bigger uh, to accommodate uh, handling manipulating this with a um, touch screen and with fingers okay so the question here um, download link for the fnc components it's uh tmssoftware.com slash site slash tmsfncuipack.asp. So I'll put that in here for you. Uh, would the rich edit support HTML? Uh, the rich editor has support for um, importing and exporting HTML. Uh, but of course, uh, with respect to the, the support of um, HTML, this is uh, limited to um, the feature set of the rich editor itself. So you have to um, consider that the feature set of the rich editor is a kind of Microsoft WordPad in a control. And so when it imports HTML with uh, that has capabilities that are not supported in um, something like MS WordPad functionality, so our rich editor functionality, it will just ignore uh, these things, and um, but other other things like fonts, color, colors, uh, hyperlinks, uh, images, uh, whatever, it will um, parse the HTML and import it in the rich editor. Okay. So Robert's asking if he buys the FNC pack, can he also build his own FNC custom controls based on the FNC framework? Yes, of course. Uh, what I actually demonstrated in this session, the, so this uh, track bar, you can build that uh, with FNC installed uh, out of the box. So uh, you can just descend from the TMS FNC custom control and uh, use our TMS FNC graphics, which is the equivalent for T canvas and uh, use methods to interact with mouse and keyboard. So just like I did in uh, the session today, uh, you are perfectly able to uh, create such a type of controls with everything that's included in the TMS FNC white pack. Now, what if somebody wanted to redistribute those after they've made their own components on top of FNC? How does the licensing work for that? Um, at this moment, um, the core, the framework neutral layer is not redistributable. I'm speaking at this moment if there would be any real interest from uh, people to um, build components for redistributing, redistributing, we actually can consider uh, changing that if there is a real demand for it. Okay, that's good to know. So. Should everybody just email you if they're interested in that, or what's the best way for them to let you know? Yeah, feel free to uh, send me an email, and uh, we can discuss that. So at this moment, we have uh, focused on bringing, uh, let's say, the our most used components um, to this uh, new framework. And so we will see in the, in the future uh, interest from other people, and it will mainly be uh, interest from users that will uh, steer future directions and future uh, developments. Okay. So uh, feel free to send me uh, any comment, uh, question, uh, etc. Uh, so I'll be uh, very happy to uh, work on that, cooperate, and uh, see how we can move uh, things forward. All right. Is the uh, tutorial and documentation, is that all available from the uh, the main TMS FNC UIPAC.ASP page? Actually, the, the uh, documentation, the PDF manuals for all these components can be directly downloaded from our manuals page. But if you install the TMS FNC UIPAC, it will install for you all PDF guides uh, related to the controls 
included. So uh, there is uh, full and extensive information in these uh, PDF guides and um, there are also plenty of uh, demos demonstrating the various capabilities of these controls. I think there are overall about 50 uh, demo projects both for uh, FMX and VCL uh, demonstrating capabilities of the components. Okay, Dave is asking if there's going to be a demo of how to design these comp controls for multiple platforms like Android as well. Uh, what I uh, showed today will work on uh, Android, also on iOS, um, and the sample project that I created today, the link in my session contains the full source code of this uh, demo, and it also uh, contains a uh, PDF document that is actually written out uh, what I have shown in uh, today's session. So with um, this source code and this article combined, uh, you have actually everything to uh, create uh, whatever user interface control you want to build upon this framework. I'm trying to find that link again real quick here. Oh, there it is right there. Yeah, here it is. The so, second uh, link. Here, I'll put that in here for everybody. There you go. There's that link again. Hopefully I typed it correctly. Okay. I think we're done. Thank you so much, Bruno, for this session and for all the work you do in uh, making such fabulous components for everybody in the Thanks community. a lot. Uh, thanks a lot, Jim. Now, did I see correctly you got an award recently for uh, as a third-party component vendor at in the econ or something like that? We got an award um, in the conference in the Netherlands from uh, the Blaise Pascal magazine. That's right, that's right, it was that one. Okay, very cool, congratulations on that. Uh, Thanks a lot, Jim. A number of people have commented in here that everybody, everybody on the call, on the line today should just uh, go out and download your stuff and buy the subscription. <laughs> it's highly recommended. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jim. Yep, absolutely, thank you. Okay, have a great conference. Thank you. And uh, see you later. All right. Thanks, bye-bye. Bye-bye.